Hello folks and welcome to episode 6 of Ray's Tech Tips. Today we're going to be talking about Ray, bring them up to speed. I'm going to go over lamp sockets, some interesting info that could be handy to people that are doing repairs themselves or just trying to figure out what's wrong with a certain lamp that won't light or lamps that light intermittently. There, there are some things that uh, be handy to know. Okay, uh, first off, why are we upstairs here and what, are, what's, what do you have behind you there? Well, just moved these here. Um, they were in my home shop and they're here for reference. It's more economical to have them here at the main shop. I got duplicate copies anyway. These are uh, file cabinets full of uh, game manuals. Game manuals are handy for reference. They're not always right. You have to use some discretion. Sometimes they're printed wrong uh, with wrong references to parts and such. But yeah. overall, overall they're handy because it gives you a good baseline to know what part numbers are um, going with the machine, like linkages and such. Um, well, on, on last week's video, uh, Arcade Russ was kind enough to point out uh, the importance of going to the manual. We were working on a T2 and and he brought up the fact that the book uh, calls for, uh, what, 11.630s? On the flippers, yeah. And we installed 11.629s, uh, which were, uh, of course, the book doesn't call for that, uh, but uh, I guess in late rounds of the factory decided that they made a mistake. Right. And they started putting in 11.629s. you got to remember, Mike, these were corn-operated devices. They were not meant to give the player the maximum experience of achieving games or credits. They were made to make money. And they didn't always pay attention to what was best for the game play. They actually made this device to make money. It was not anything else other than that. Uh, with that said, the books, yeah, do have pages uh, in them that have superseded and they add part numbers and change. Because when you print a book, you know, like, when you print a manual, it is so big. Um, there, there's a lot covered in it, and a lot of times there's going to be um, an addendum which the operator or user that bought the game threw out because they don't keep it. It's, they're little single sheets of paper which tell you um, things have changed in the book because when they print this. Now, sometimes you'll see first printing, second printing, final. That means the thing was printed a few times. Yeah, yeah and at this point they were done with it. Yeah, and they've already added revision pages to it. But yeah, you're right about uh, flippers and uh, the the architecture of Bally Williams books is to put the coils in the front, switches, lamp matrixes on the inside of the back cover, which is really handy. You don't have to go digging through pages. It's also in here. But this is your reference for coils used in the machine. Um, and it'll tell you which ones are which. The 629s are blue coil color paper. Um, in the in the day that they were made, that color of the paper designates coil strength. Blue 629s are the most powerful coil made for Bally Williams games. Um, okay. Uh, 630s was were next, and then on down, they had five different coil strengths probably. But uh, um, Russ's Russ's point was was very valid. Uh, you know, anytime a, a a game comes in here and it's it's questionable as to what's been done to it when. Right. Uh, the the book is a, is is a, an extreme yep. value. Lesson to... I recently learned on a haunted house was um, coils that were in in the drop target drop target bank reset were wrong, and also on another system one game we did, you know. So you never assume what's in there is right, and you could actually not be chasing an electronic problem or a wiring problem or a mechanical problem. You could be chasing somebody that put a wrong coil in. Um, so yeah, you got to check it. Yeah, he's right. Um, there are custom um, requests that I get. Some games were never designed right. Manufacturer makes these. They were made to make money devices, so they were just making production to get it out the door. They didn't have the best gameplay in mind for um, the pins, so when they, when they designed some of it, they wouldn't put coils of the, of the appropriate strength, especially on T2 because it has all long shots and they put 630s in it and then you just it's not enough so I have requests to update other than what the book calls for but it, it is a good baseline well, a lot, of, a lot of this just comes from your experience and and uh, but it, there's there's value to knowing you know what what belonged there in the first place yeah 
Yeah, and here we have, these are alphabetical order. Um, the manufacturers that this covers is all, all the major manufacturers, and I put them in alphabetical order because if you don't know who made it and you're looking under a title, um, it doesn't matter. I mean, I had this by manufacturers at first, but then it got too much to, uh, to control because some of them have more than others. So this is simply A to Z. This whole cabinet is full of A to Z games, new and old Stearns, new and old Bally's, and new and old Williams games. Um, you know, and I have a complete collection here. I don't think there's too many. I'm medieval. Missing. You got an original or a copy? It's an original final oh. medieval, yes. Has that ever been open? Um, it doesn't look like it. I don't think it was ever used for reference. That's got the operator uh, book there, little, the little right. leaflet chumpy. But the importance of books is a good uh, reference for parts. Monster Bash. Mm -hmm. Hey, that's an original. Yeah. Final copy. Um, yeah, there's probably uh, 200 books in here. And of course, when you get into the really technical problems, those have the schematics in them that you need. Right. Okay, cool. Well, we wanted to touch on this because uh, Arcade Russ, uh, we appreciate his participation in this forum. And uh, what he said was valid, and we just wanted to, to, to confirm that, uh, that we appreciate the value of, of checking the manual. It's almost an always thing to do, and, unless, of course, it's something that you, uh, you know, you've encountered T2, what, a thousand times, and, right. and at this so point, you don't The value you. of this hobby and business is to learn from others and share information. It's important. I would never stop learning as long as I'm alive fixing this. You, nobody ever, I don't, I don't care who you are or what you do, you learn from each other, share information. It's what makes the hobby more ple pleasurable and easier to, to get somewhere with because it's frustrating. This stuff's complicated, so much of it, and there's so much data. And it was made years ago, and most of the people that designed and built this stuff are gone. They're dead. They passed away because this stuff is so old. You know, th this is a video game drawer, uh, and then it goes on down to more video games, and then this is it. These are two video game drawers, and then I have uh, skill games. These are uh, these are games made a long time ago. Sea Wolf, Ray Gun. This is very old. Paces Races. This is a uh, 30s game. Uh, 20s, 30s. Game. I'm assuming you fixed one of those. Well, you wouldn't. Yeah, have I, a few of them. Yeah. There's a haunted house, um, the gun game, black yeah. light gun game, um, you know, and then there's some, uh, these are Bally slot machine books. And then the last drawer is jukeboxes. This stuff goes pretty way back in years, um, goes all the way to the back. There's probably a hundred manuals in here. This covers Rockhold as well as your Seabergs. So manuals are important. And uh, I definitely believe you're referring to them, and that's why I have this. Okay, well, today we're doing uh, lamp sockets. We don't need a manual for that, do we? No. Okay, we're moving on. We'll cut right back to you in just a moment. Yep. Okay, Ray, we're now in the uh, the scrap playfield room. Uh, give us an overview of, of what we're looking for uh, with, with lamp socket problems. Well, there's several manufacturers in here. We'll take a look at quick, quickly over all of them. This is a wind hot tip early one now. Most lamp sockets, new and old, um, the steel ones that you can bend away to change and that's what these are designed like. They're made to bend repetitively to change a lamp. This is a number 44 and it's a bayonet socket. Um, this is an example of a failed socket when this rotates very freely like this um, because it, it will intermittently light and it'll drive you crazy and you'll go bending and I've seen people solder. Yeah, well I think we'll see that downstairs. Yeah, the, the correct thing to do with something like this that is starting to rust and corrode is to uh, replace it. Um, that's one type of stand-up lamp socket. There are several different kinds. Um, the diode is to keep the current from feeding back and lighting other ones. Okay, and what happens when the factory put the diode on backwards? Yeah, it won't yeah. light. Yeah. And, or, and or and send you lock on, a chain send you on a crazy road. trip of trying to find out what's happening. Half locked on ones. Okay, what else we got up here? Well, we've got Bally's early. You can see it's a similar design. They don't use diodes at the lamp socket, though, as you can see. They're up at the at the, the driver board? The switches, that's right. They, they didn't want that there because it made it harder to to get at, and that's a similar year. 
as this hot tip, by the way, within a year or two. It's just what Bally did. They did it different. And there, there's good and bads about it. I mean, it makes the, um, the lamp driver board more crowded, you know, but it's just a preference design. Okay, and we have Daddy East up here. We've got a, this is a Sega. Which yeah. is, is comparable to your to your new stern design? Yeah, and they came out with this. They came out with. Um, I'm, now, cu I'm curious about this one. Um, there's it, it's a spare because they break. They're brittle, and oh. they just hung it there. Stern does that. They'll they'll hang. In fact, sometimes they put this in it and just leave it there <laughs> with no lamp in it. Well, that's that's and actually kind of nice of them. Yeah, it's a spare part. Now the the reason for it is. These are brittle and they get rotten and they crack. Now this this play field doesn't have a lot of on time because it's not so brittle. I've already gone out on sterns that are only seven, eight years old. This is way older than that. These are so brittle when you go to take them out, this just disintegrates. It just breaks right. A whole tab breaks. And right. then your lamp falls out. Yeah, then it won't stay in. This has one holder, you know. I mean, and there's no way to make it stay in. Uh, the thing they've done though is they have through wires on all of them. This makes it kind of difficult to replace if you're a homeowner. Now the diode is inside here. They did put the diodes wow. on the uh, the lamp holders. They didn't do the board diodes, and the diode clamps down in there pushes in. When you get a new lamp socket, you will get a diode with it. What you'll get is you'll get when you order it, you'll get this. When you change it, you're doing this. You're going from this to here. Now they make a tool to do this. Some people will use a screwdriver, some won't. Uh, if you go into a, uh, an uncut part of the wire, you just set it in here. Now you would take your punch down tool and shove it in there. And this is a V, a copper V down in here, and it's very sharp. And it's made to cut through this, and that's what it does. It cuts through uh, twice. They do it repetitively be because in case one doesn't cut through. Mm -hmm. but That makes sense. Yeah, and that's how you replace a lamp socket. When you get it, you get this, and you have to deal with it this way. Uh, it's not that hard to do, uh, but it is annoying because it's not a solder. Uh, and to a tech that is used to soldering, this is actually easier, I guess, uh, because people that don't like to solder would probably prefer this, but I don't really care much for, for how this... Uh, Eventually it's going to break the wire. You can see it's chewed through a few conductors already. So I don't know about this for longevity, but you can take this, put two, put the two wires and solder it on. You can put a standard lamp socket like this sure. on this machine. Yeah, the, the, the theory of operation is identical. Yeah, so <clears throat> it's all right. It's a production cost thing. Um, it, it does make the lamp easier to aim, you know, and uh, it is easier to change a lamp because you don't have to be doing this to bend it and put it back. Although these will go through a lot of cycles before they break off. Yeah, how do you change a GI a GI lamp when you've got a braided a braided uh, ground line and the thing's stapled to the the play field yeah. and it's underneath 18 things? You have to take it off. You have to take 18 things off to get to it. That's or awful. pull the staples off if yeah. you want to go. You can pry this up with a screwdriver and come out. I really don't like to do that because it's hard to get these staples back in. No doubt. Yeah, and if this is hanging, it's sloppy. So, yeah, you have to go through the top. That's aggravating. Okay, have we seen what we want to see up here? I believe so. All right. covers most of uh, what you're going to see in different play fields. This is straightforward work. There's nothing mystic about it. Limb sockets are inexpensive. They're easy to replace. And when you're dealing with so many of them, average gain probably has... Over 100. Sure. 150. You can get 50 right in the back box. Probably 200, yeah, if you include the back box. But your play field probably has in excess of 200 in a game like this. Uh, half of those are probably controlled and the other half are GI. Um, so you're dealing with a lot of lamp sockets. If you have a problem with one on a newer old game, it's best just to replace it because if it intermittently lights, you're going to be uh, playing with it. And the time you spend fooling with it, put a new one in and be done. Yeah, and the logic about having them light is it's almost as important as flippers because you don't know where you're at in the game. Oh yeah, who? Yeah, the extra balls lit, but you didn't see it because it what didn't what one lit. Yeah, yeah that's, feature lights, that's controlled awful. lamps have sure. to work because it's if enough of them fail, the game's not any fun to play. There's nothing to, to get because you don't know where you're at. Okay, let's take this downstairs and uh, look at the look at the new supply and whatever else we got down there. All right. Okay, here we are. I like what those? Yes. I'd, I'd like them if they were done. Yeah. Um, okay, uh, what are we looking at now? Funny guy. 
Uh, it's just a parts collection I carry, a uh, lamp socket. This is your truck stock. Yeah, and this is by no means what you're going to need if you're going to be replacing lamp sockets on a game that has a lot of bad ones. I did a Rolling Stones recently in Bally, uh, early years Rolling Stones, and it took uh, 17 lamp sockets. You probably have equally as many in the Sea Witch already. Yeah, yeah, and uh, these are just different styles. Uh, they're basically different lengths, you know. I mean, uh, the, the long one is the most common used on play fields, and it goes through and lights the uh, little starlight thingies. And the um, shorter ones would be GI for yeah. sticking through the play field. Right. And these are uh, dual tab. You don't use the one tab in an old game. Uh, you solder to here and to here. This is a diode holding tab for new games. They don't make the single long tab anymore, uh, as I was told. Uh, because um, it's too much to, to, for production. You just ignore this Why tab. do I suspect you were told rather aggressively? Yeah, I was. <laughs> but that's all right. I learned. I'm not opposed to learning anything from anybody. If you, if First he asked, what's the part number on that? Where's the book? <laughs> yeah, if you're not open to, uh, to learning something, don't get into this hobby yeah. because it's going to frustrate you to no end. You, you always take advice from people and pass it on. It's a learning thing. It helps the hobby, and it's just common sense you know here is another one this will mount flat on the play field this is for like a uh, alcohol or something you know they like to um, yeah the roll kicker the rollover roll yeah rollovers stuff like roll that, over yeah. stars yeah that's right but what I'm saying is there's a lot of different you know and these are the uh, 555 wedge base is what this is called gets its name because it wedges the lamp in and those are the uh, the plug-in half turn j jobs right. they fail occasionally yeah um, from being changed and under tension, these little ears break off. When you're changing a lamp, it's always a good practice to squeeze these just a little bit and bring them back out because they get flat being in the game. Sure. Um, they do corrode and get green and turn all kinds of colors in here. And Don't try filing it. It'll, it won't work. Once the zinc plating or, or whatever they call this gold plating, it's some sort of zinc coating. Once that wears off, the base metal doesn't conduct electricity very well. So don't don't go filing thing here or, or glass beading these. It's not worth it. Oh, I I, I can imagine me trying that. Uh, you know these are coin door lamps. Um, there, there's different kinds of uh, lamps here. This is a wedge based, uh, probably for above the play field where it has a. Uh... Um, the the diodes that you have there, they're uh, they're standard and uh, the. Yeah, I use uh, one in four thousand sevens. You can use 1N4004s or 4003s because the lamp, the load, the back load on this diode for this lamp, I mean, it, it's not much. Tell everybody what a diode does because I bet somebody out there doesn't know. Well, diodes just prevent current from going backwards. It'll allow current to go one way and not come back at all. No leakage back at all. Now, certain diodes like Zeners will allow only a certain voltage to go forward, but still no voltage to come back. But a diode in a lamp, a diode in a lamp usage area, it'll go from here to here, and a lot of people will stand them off like this. When you solder them on, you can uh, prepare it, and then you take your um, needle nose and crimp it and put a nice angle on it and cut off the uh, lengths. This is mostly what you'll see in a game. I'm seeing a quick uh, opportunity to ruffle some ru ruffle some feathers here. There's these anti-ghosting uh, LEDs, you know, uh, where we love our, our LED supplier, but they, they have these fancy LEDs that are supposed to cut down on ghosting and this and that and the other thing. Yeah. We've, we've fought with ghosting before, and what have we found? Every time. Bad diode in the circuit somewhere. Or a leaky diode. See, diodes can fail and leak. They're not supposed to, but that's a failure. A diode can actually start to wear out and leave current electronically wear out. There's nothing moving, by the way. It is just a silicone junction. It will wear out and leak current back. Small amount. And, it'll, and you'll see uh, the other, other lamps Partial in the line. power leak through. So it's like a water valve. Like It'll leak. Same thing, if you want to call it that. Now, these are your plastic replacements. These are brand new. You can Somebody's see. going to argue with us on that. what you just said, uh, by the way. That should be interesting. These are back box. They are made to push in 
from the front. These are for your uh, back boxes. Well, they, they push in from the back. Uh, they go this way, the bulb comes out. These are for 906s. Uh, oh, flasher. Flasher. Yeah, okay. yeah that's what they are. Um, I got those because sometimes these break off and then they just fall, fall out. out. Yeah. And then there's some specialty ones for different applications. These are, you know, diodes that are pre soldered on. Uh, and then I got some specialty lamp. Yeah, those things are always field. worn out and ugly looking. You know, and these are reflectors that, that snap on. And break off. Mm -hmm. These are kind of interesting. These are made to solder onto a lamp board. Oh, the uh, they hang out over the edge. Oh yeah, we love those. Their uh, Theater of Magic uh, oh, has yeah, a bunch of them. Of them. Uh, Indy, I think, has a lot of them. When you're changing a bulb in one of these and little they things, they break off in your hands. Yeah, do not try to do that because it's tight. Do not try to do it, especially with uh, LEDs, because they're thicker. They're yeah, hard to push in. The base is thicker. They have not made them. They make them tighter. So in other words, a real you quick, break this right real quick tip here is if you're LED Take in a, a theater or uh, any of those that have the sideways bulbs coming off of the, uh, the, the, lamp the bulb out. boards, yeah, remove them yeah. so that you can have two hands on the job while you're trying to push them in. Yep. Stock these in case I find break, breakage. Then this is another box. These are... You have room for... You don't have enough new parts, right? You've got empty bins. Yeah, i got to expand maybe one day. Yeah. These are flash lamps. The large base uh, bayonets. Uh, uh, yeah, 906 or, or um, 89. 89. And there's different styles of them. Um, and then these are for ramps. Generally is where you find these type of things. And these are like, this came out, of, I think these go Whirlwind and games like that where they just push on. They came out later on with these that rivet or screw on, and then they, these are the earlier version. I've never seen the push on. Yeah, they just started remaking these. I think uh, Pinball Life, you know. Uh, the, the socket that goes in it is, uh, I think, one of these. No. I don't know why, I forget what goes in there. There's a socket that goes in the other end here. Um, and then you got your uh, globe that goes sure. on here. I forget what socket goes on those. I know it's not these. Something else to buy, I'll fill up a bit. Yeah, well, you know what, uh, we'll wait. The reason I don't carry the socket is because they don't break. Now, the socket just sits in here and there's a little tab right there. What's that? Yeah, Arcade that's... Rust, what game does that, what, does that fit? We're waiting for your answer. This snaps onto the ramp is where they go. And these break. But the socket doesn't break. So I, I, probably why I didn't order them, but these are always broken. That's why I ordered a bunch of them. And it's easy to put on because there's no preparation. The socket just turns on. That's it for parts on, on lamps. Um, okay. They do take a different uh, holder. This is a 906 holder, and you can see how miniature sure. the 555 holder is. Similar construction, just heavy Yeah, that's duty. right, yeah. Yeah, because flash lamps have more current going through them. They run on 12 volts. These lamps, controlled in GI, run on six, six to seven volts AC. Okay. While I'm sitting here, somebody come challenge me to a game of pinball. I, I, I haven't whooped up on anybody recently, Ray. Well. Yeah. Well, thought for another day. Yeah. That's we got, a winner. We got we got work to do. Um, I, we, I guess we have two more uh, play fields here to show uh, uh, somebody soldered on one over there and uh, yeah let's take a, take a walk over there Ray take us take us for a show well, you can see Circus Voltaire I don't want to see it later game uses a similar lamp holder is what you saw there um, of course they use diodes on the lamp holders here I don't want to look at this game right now, or, no. or ever. It's a project. This was an example of uh, <clears throat> eBay. What's that? What's that wonderful term? Collector quality. Yeah. Th this yeah. was an eBay collector quality machine. Somebody saw our circus on the floor and they said, "Well, I can go get one somewhere else for half the price. It's just as nice." Well, he was wrong. Yeah. Um. That's see, it's just an opinion, Mike. 
like anybody, has an opinion on anything that anybody else says or does. That's my opinion, what I uh, inject with these little tech thingies. Anybody is welcome to uh, di additions to it or, or anything. Or disputes. But opinion yeah. of, opinion well, of see, that's, use. That's the fun thing about the, the term collector quality is... Uh, well, with your thousand customers, you every one is a collector, and some of them collect uh, the top end stuff, and then others collect the bottom end stuff. Right. Uh, you know, it, it just you know it doesn't work at all. But there it is. I collect that. So collector quality is is ambiguous. Whatever makes you happy. It doesn't. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't make much sense. Yeah, I, don't, I don't really. All right. What what do we see on the T two here? Is there oh, any? boards. These are lamp boards. They started getting away from the individual holders like you've seen on some of the machines upstairs where they would have one, two, three, five holders. What they have done with games such as this from the 90s and on out, the early 80s machines, you didn't see too much of this. You've seen it start. But in the 90s, you see almost all of this. The problem with them is these pads can become dimpled and pitted from the... Um, pressure that that little turn socket puts on them and you might have to take a uh, fiberglass clean brush board cleaning brush and, yeah and, and take that level also these headers here are board through headers they actually come from the other side and go through the board these get to be cold solder joints they're notorious and it's hard to see you'll have lamps that come on and off as you touch them or hit it tap it it could be start here it could be a cold solder joint another thing that goes wrong with these for some reason the diodes are mounted on the boards on the other side the diodes go bad on these quite frequently if you have a lamp out we're ghosting and with your LEDs yeah first thing to suspect is your light bulb simplest uh, the the socket you can easily pull a working one off and throw it over there that's what I would do the second thing after that don't work is check this make sure you don't have a uh, cold solder joint Check the connector. The, the final thing would be a diode here. After the diode, you'd have to go back to the, the board. lamp driver board yeah. for the transistor, yes. But check these three things while you're in here. Um, the, the cold solder joint on the pins there is, is so common. Yeah, well, especially uh, on them. Yeah. But not at all difficult to fix. No, you solder. Just, you just flow some new solder on there, bam, you're done. Yeah, you really should remove the old. If you flow new on top of the old, it might crack again, unless you use a good bit of flux. Um, I like to sort of move it off and put new on. I don't have time for that, Ray. Well, it's a matter of preference. See here again, there is no right or wrong way to do it. Most people will flow on it. They won't take the time to put the solder braid on there and take it off. That's why you're in charge around here, and I just you know, to hold the camera. I've done it both ways. I don't. As long as you use enough flux, you can reactivate the old solder, and it might not break away for you. It's not a high stress thing anyway. It only occurs after so many years. You know, it's the kind of thing you'll have to learn as you go along with these things. Okay, there's our C. Which uh, right. what? Show me a lamp socket that you haven't replaced on it yet. Well, uh, well, I didn't start. Um, on the top end, and I started on the bottom, and uh, I'm still going up through here. Uh, there's probably going to be some, when the game gets turned on, that don't light. They'll reveal themselves. Yeah, yeah. and they're spring-loaded. You can see the little button here. There's a spring inside here, and when these get dirty and oxidized, sometimes if you hit that, it'll flick the dirt off. It might make a, a better fix if you're not intending to replace it. But it's not socket. really a fix. It's a temporary show me what no. the problem is. No, and if you have a pesty one, you just have to put it, replace it. They're, they're like 30 cents, 50 cents each. It's this, not. This was interesting. Explain, explain to me what I'm, oh, well, what I'm, what I'm trying to do. This guy had here. a problem with this is loose and it rotates. Um, so he just soldered um, the base, which contacts the metal lamp to to the um, ground here which solders to the, the metal base right here you can see that lamp socket is shot right he, he you know, somebody tried to fix it that way which is fine they didn't want to take the time to fix it it might even work but <laughs> the, the rest of the problems with lamp sockets by the way are internal this is not a bad example but they get oxidized and corroded in here and there are several tools and things made to help that but 
but none of them are replace the socket and be done. Yeah, if you get the little <coughs> cleaning stick, by the way, um, it's like an abrasive cleaning stick, and you can put it on a drill if you want. You can have at it, and you can polish and clean the inside of this like crazy. <laughs> That's fine. It's not going to last because the coating that has corroded off with age and use is going to oxidize and corrode back, and you'll be back in there. And it's not worth it. I don't even use mine anymore much. Um, it's they also make bulb grease, which I found really neat. Uh, <laughs> this reminds me of you. You see well, advertisements for. Then they used to use them in like brake lights and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. It's another temporary. I don't want to fix it right, and I'm in a hurry type thing. It's it's a gimmick. It's like these headlight polishing kits you see on TV, where the guy wipes a chemical on without doing any sanding or anything else, and it brightens up the headlight. That does not work. It's I don't know how they frankly get away with it. <laughs> false advertising but stuff like that gimmicky people fall for shortcut stuff gimmicky warnings look you know what work is do it and you'll be rewarded by something that actually works when you're done shortcut it and look for some uh, slick way to get around work and it's, yeah there is no easy fixes on any of this stuff no if you do the work you're done this is what I find okay well we're not going to show anybody exactly how to replace a, a bulb socket it's not uh, it's not no. rocket science, uh, any of it. Soldering is the only thing you really have to know, and you should have flux, and you should have 60-40 uh, solder. And I like the thinner stuff. Don't go and get this off the 3 off the 16th yeah. inch diameter like you're going to be soldering an old copper <laughs> radiator in a car. Get, get little stuff, 100 thousandths, 80 thousandths diameter, because it takes less heat to melt that than to melt that big hunk and solder. Uh, if you're using a pencil liner or, or anything. And it'll make it so you can do a neat job instead of a big mess. Yeah, and don't tend to try to solder this miniature stuff with a gun. That's 100 and 140 watt. It quickly gets up above 800 to 1,000 degrees. This stuff is not made to, to use that kind of heat on. And what will happen to your solder is it'll turn from a shiny silvery to a powdery gray dull looking. That means your solder is not going to hold. It will fall off because you've overheated the solder, baked all the flux out of it. And changed its composition. Yeah, and it, you're, all you're doing is dealing with metal and metal here. You're dealing with a zinc-coated copper or steel part, whether it's a flipper coil, uh, coil tab or a lamp tab, and copper-stranded wire, which is sometimes zinc-coated. But you're just dealing with different kind of metals. You're introducing both metals with solder to hold them all together. You're, in essence, dealing with three different kinds of metals. So you need flux, and flux is no more than just like an acid, and it helps introduce all those metals to bond it. Besides the heat, there's more going on. Sure. Okay. That's how you can be successful at soldering without burning your fingers off. Because when you're soldering this stuff, you have to get close to hold this wire on. It gets hot until it's done bonding. You don't just go up to this and just put the wire in. The wire ain't going to stay there. It, wants to, it don't want to be there. And I think I think a lot of uh, you know uh, entry level hobbyists, uh, myself included, at some point, uh, you know, soldering was something that uh, we we just didn't want to do. We didn't really understand yeah, it, no. how it can look so easy, but yet be such a such a pain to do. There are holes here, and that's what these holes are for. By the way, there's two of them. The one has got the wire in it. The other one is empty, but it's a dual hole. The, that hole, you, you can actually put your wire through the hole, and it may hold the wire in place while you're soldering so you don't have to hold it. That works to a limited point. If you feed enough bare wire through that hole, you can actually bend it over and use it to hold itself. But you want to keep, this is a good solder joint example, you want to keep the vinyl very close to the, uh, the solder point wherever you're soldering. Yeah, we critiqued Jimmy on that the other day. Well, yeah, you don't want to leave too much of a gap because it's, it's number one, it's, it's sloppy and I see sloppy right here. What is what's going on there? Oh, uh, Lord. Okay. Um, it, it's somebody's attempt at doing a coil. Um, yeah. When you're into the heavier gauge wire, it's a little more difficult. And when you have multiple conductors going to a terminal, people often get confused on how to do it. Um, in this case, there's three wires going to this terminal. Um, and the one's very short. So I like to twist all three together, and then I solder the twist, cut it off, and then solder it on. Don't try to hold all them wires on there. It's not going to happen.
Yeah, well, you'll, you'll learn from trying that that ain't fun. Yeah. There's technique involved here. It's, it's, it's no, uh, no more than experience is going to get you better. Okay, we have anything else here to show with these older lamp sockets? No, I don't believe so. Do, I, we, I, want to, do we want to take a look at the archi architecture of the brand new uh, stuff? Yeah. We got a Waz out here. Let's see what that they're doing now. Idea. And talk about, because uh, they're going to need lamps replaced at some point, I would assume. Yeah, Bally, Bally Williams did this in very limited machines, what we'll show you out here, only once or twice in a game. Uh, Stern started to do it occasionally. They did it, I think, in uh, Lord of the Rings. Yeah, um, I think I think they're all, all their LEs or uh, you know all their high end stuff is now going to be very similar this. to what we're about to see. Yeah. Okay. Let's... I have mixed emotions about it. Well, let's go out there and talk about it. All right. We don't even have to cut away. Here we go. At a glance, you can see. These are all multicolor LEDs in the tractor mode. It's it's uh, doing its um, demo. What it is is it's one LED that is multiple colors that generate this. Uh, so one LED for each lamp holder. But are these LEDs like uh, like the coin takers that uh, the head has a, a different dot for each color? Yeah. Okay. Well, I'm going to turn up the, the lights on us a little bit here. I'm a big fan of the Invisiglass already, Ray. I think it does it, it does what it's as advertised. Yeah. Neat stuff. Yeah, it is neat. Um, I don't know if you get the, the value per dollar out of it, but it's uh, it does do what they say it does. Well, it depends on on what you consider as money. I mean, plate glass can be a third cheaper, but. Uh, if you don't regard the extra expense and like the anti-glare yeah, property, it definitely, uh, like I said, does. It is coated on both sides. <laughs> okay. And it's polarized. If you look at two sheets crosswise, it's actually going to look dark. Yeah. It's not no glare, but it's, it, it is significantly reduced. Right. And all of this is regular tempered 3 16 with a coating on it. Neat. I think I understand it was first introduced for uh, buildings. Glass, uh, glass for traffic buildings. control because yeah. people were getting light Bear. in their eye. Yeah. yeah, it was like a giant mirror. Yeah. Uh, Alright. Now, the first thing I want to say about this is I know it has the, uh, the ball latch so that you actually don't have to take the balls out before uh, before right. tilling this. We incorporated the same thing that uh, Revenge from Mars and some of the other ones were done at the end. Uh, Star Wars Episode 1. Um, I'll be honest with you, I don't trust it. I still like to take the balls out, but maybe that's just force of habit. Yeah, no, this swing's pretty free and it's just a simple ball lock. Uh, the uh, aftermarket trough you can buy nowadays for all the W. Yeah, the upgrade trough has, well, it has a, uh, not a swinging latch, but a, 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 a little Push switch up. that, yeah, yeah. yeah. The first generation of those was the swing latch, though. Oh, was it? Yeah, they did away with it for some reason. This is uh, the latest thing out. The Jersey Jack pinball. He's using lamp boards. Um, and I, I have mixed feelings, but maybe the longevity is, is better than I think. But, you know, my, my thought is if you have a lamp out, you have to replace a board. There, there's no facility. It's not serviceable at, in the slightest bit. No. Why can't you solder a new LED in there? Um, it's all SMD stuff and it's very miniaturized. Just placing the lamp that goes in there is so small, the pads are pin dot. You almost <laughs> need a, a microscope to place the part before you solder it. Huh. And some of these aren't even soldered. Um, they're using either infrared or baking them on. Um, I seen the facility at the manufacturing plant, Jersey Jacks in Lakewood, how they do that. And they actually have a board baker and they put the components on it, slide trays in and bake the components on. Neat. 
They don't hand solder any of this stuff. They do it all at once. Of course, it's paramount to place the components right. Sure. Um, and I talked to some of the techs about the repairs and such. You can probably send a board away, but you know, from what I understand, I don't think they want to see anything repairable. You buy a new unit. Well, the, the manufacturing cost is all in setup. They can stamp one of those things out for nothing. Yeah. Um, so, can, but it's neat. It's can you can you pull one of those boards? I want to see what it looks like on the other side. I I, I right. haven't seen one. Hit the switch. Hit the switch. Yeah, but I like to work on machines when they're on. That way, I can introduce new diagnostic uh, uh, learning opportunities for you. Yeah, you can get away with it on the incandescent machines as uh, long as you don't short anything. And that's another good point. When you're doing lamp replacement, always work on lamps with the game on. That way, you can uh, find a reason to call Ray uh, or you know. You gotta support. be careful. Do not short a controlled lamp or GI to a switch. Uh, everybody, I was kidding. Do always work on your uh, your lamps with the game off. Most people won't. Yeah, I don't either. But there's no light source. Every time I do, game, it's like you it's, know, it's dark. I, I roll the dice uh, because uh, you know I'm in there LED in the whole machine. So uh, you want to see what you're doing. So, you don't want to turn it off and on 50 times. So so by but but by the time I've done uh, you know 80 controlled lamps underneath and uh, bend GI out of the way, this that and the other thing, um, my my luck has uh, been known to run out and uh, you know a bulb falls down while falls out of my hand while I'm working and falls across another socket and, bl and blows blows up your board yeah and then I gotta call you on the road and you know let you know Ray's been really nice about me blowing up boards uh, I don't know how many more I've got left how many more I got left Ray three or four <laughs> Oh, while he's unscrewing that, here's sort of rush the rock. This is a member of a pair. Ray, are you going to get the other one done one of these days so that yeah. I can have a pair of these? It's a neat old game. I'm just short a monitor. I got to get a monitor out of my stock and recondition it. And uh, I think I got most of the other parts of the game done. For an older game, it's a lot of fun. It's uh, it's got a clutch. It what it penalizes you if you don't shift properly. Um, you know, but, for the year it was made, 1997. It, it it holds its own even with today's stuff. Yeah, it's got it's got a great sound system. They uh, uh, th it feels really stereo. It's got the thump in the seat. Uh, the feature I like best about it is as as you're you know uh, you actually incur damage to your car. And it gets all squirrely and impossible to drive as you're going along. Yeah. Uh, not like the F and F's where you just hit something and uh, yeah, you just kind of keep going. That's more an entertainment game. This is a more realistic driving game. Atari always had that interest. So did Sega. Um, they always had a, a purity interest in what they were doing with their games to make them more realistic. It probably didn't make the gameplay collect more money because a kid no, doesn't want to. They don't care. Like they want to just drive. Yeah. Yeah, that's the second in the series of the uh, Rush the Rocks. There was first series uh, was Rush the Rocks, second is Alcatraz, and the last one they made in the three was uh, 2049. Uh, this is the lamp board. And you can see. Down there a light over here. You can see the uh, driver chips. You're never going to solder that by hand ever. Even, it, even that the, is pretty small. Yes, even the LEDs would give you a challenge. Uh, and the surface mount caps. This, this here makes a whole lamp. There's a resistor and uh, I guess it's a driver IC of some kind that makes the, the thing change colors. But if you have a failure even in a lamp, that would be a hard thing to do, if you ask me. Freestanding soldering that on a bench, I don't think it'd be practical. Need technology. Yeah. Uh, a little difficult to service. Uh, yeah. You're not going to be uh, fixing that in the field unless you have the board. No. Okay, well, uh, that about wraps it up for lamp sockets. This, my camera says I've got zero minutes left on this round, so uh, right. 
What are we going to visit next week? Uh, come up with something. Go. Well, you know, ball shooters. Ball shooters. Okay, I'm, I look forward to what you've got to say about that. Yeah, don't well. tell. Don't tell me now because I'm out of film. There's two of them on that game. <laughs> uh, Ball shooters. That's what I want. Thanks, folks. Yeah. Appreciate you tuning in. Tune in on Sunday for uh, a reshoot with Melanie on The Strange Science. We're glad you're watching. Uh, look forward to hearing from you. Arcade Russ, hello. See everybody next Hi. We hope you've enjoyed this video. If you haven't already subscribed, what are you waiting for? Want to know what's coming next? Go like us on Facebook, right now. You can keep up to date with all of us here at the shop and what we've been up to. Thank you for watching. Join the circus.